Hello. In this week's Torah portion, Re'eh, we read about tzedakah, frequently translated as charity. Quotes, If there is among you a needy person from one of your brothers in one of your cities, in your land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart, nor close your hand from your needy brother. Rather, you shall surely open your hand to him and lend him all that he lacks, whatever he is lacking. In Hebrew, Dei Mahsoro Asher Yahsar Lo. Unquote. So, you're supposed to give a poor person Dei Mahsoro, all that he lacks. What does this mean? What if he's a king in exile? Are you supposed to support him in a regal style? What if you yourself lack what he's accustomed to? Is there an upper limit to tzedakah? If so, what is it? Before we try to answer these questions, let us review the Jewish rules of tzedakah as laid out in the Talmud. First, every Jew is obligated to give charity, even one who is himself dependent on charity. After all, you can always find someone who is worse off than you are. The norm is about 10% of net income after taxes. This is called tithe. The minimum is about $2 a year. The Midrash says that giving to the poor is a mitzvah, a commandment, that benefits the giver more than the recipients. Quote, Rabbi Yehoshua taught, The poor man does more for the master of the house than the master of the house does for the poor man. Unquote. There is a legend asserting that the prophet Elijah sometimes appears to a dying man in the guise of a poor man seeking, seeking charity to give him one last chance to perform the mitzvah. The Talmud adds in hyperbolic style, quote, Tzedakah is as important as all the other commandments put together, and not giving is tantamount to idolatry, unquote. If you refuse to give, or give less than you could, the court can assess an amount and take it by force, and even have you flogged if you stand in the way. Charity must also be given to the non-Jewish poor. The Mishnah says, quote, The poor among the Gentiles may not be prevented from gathering gleanings, forgotten sheaves, and the corner of the fields in the interest of peace. Unquote. Indeed, a 2003 study found that Jewish institutions get only 6% of large gifts by Jewish philanthropists, that is, gifts larger than $10 million. Most Jewish giving goes to schools, universities, health-related charities, the arts and culture, and general charities. Charity should not be accepted from non-Jews unless it is absolutely unavoidable, so as to give Jews a chance to perform the mitzvah. Women have priority over men in receiving charity. Relatives have priority over strangers. The poor of one's own community have priority over others and the poor of Eretz Israel have priority over everybody else. The laws of hospitality say that a traveler out of money may receive charity no matter how much he owns, and does not have to pay it back. Cash-poor Jews are not forced to sell household goods to be eligible for charity. They are not forced to sell other property either, either if market prices are lower than usual. One may fool a man into thinking he's getting a loan rather than a handout. Misers who refuse to use their own means to help themselves should be ignored. The community must appoint charity warden, Gabbae Tzedakah, to collect and distribute charity. At least two must collect together, and at least three must decide where the money goes. The poor register with these wardens, who prioritize the poor's needs. These wardens are called eternal stars in the Talmuds, and greater even than the givers. Individuals soliciting charity outside the charity warden system, such as beggars in the streets, must not be given large amounts. A promise to give charity must be fulfilled immediately. Maimonides listed eight levels of tzedakah extracted from the Talmuds. The lowest level is give a little with a frown. The second, give a little with a smile. The third, give what is needed when you're asked. 
The fourth, give what is needed without being asked. The fifth, give without knowing who you give to, but the person you know helps uh, no, you help knows you. The sixth, you know who you give to, but he doesn't know you. The seventh, you don't know who you give to, and the person you help doesn't know you either. Finally, the highest level of tzedakah is help people help themselves. For example, by giving them jobs, loans, tuition to learn a trade, sage advice, etc. Indeed, in the Jerusalem Talmud, Rabbi Yonah says, quote, It says in the book of Psalms, Happy is he who considers the poor. It is not written, Happy is he who gives to the poor, but happy is he who considers the poor. That is, happy is he who ponders how best to fulfill the commandments to help the poor. Unquote. You must avoid being dependent on charity. The Talmud says, Make your Shabbat like a weekday if necessary by not eating special food or wearing good clothes if you cannot afford them, rather than be dependent on others. And even a wise and honored man should do menial work even skinning unclean animals, rather than take charity. Now we come to the limits of tzedakah. The Talmud says you should give no more than 20% of your wealth to charity. Quote, Rabbi Eli stated, It was ordained at Usha that if a man wishes to spend liberally for charity, he should not spend more than a fifth of his wealth, since by spending more he might himself come to be in need. It once happened that a man wished to spend more than a fifth, but his friend would not allow him. And who was his friend? Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Nachman, or as some say, Rabbi Acha ben Yaakov, said, What is the proof from the Torah? In Genesis, Jacob said to God, And of all that you shall give me, I will surely give the tenth to you. Aser, asrenu lach. The repetition of the word aser, to give, means that what one must give two tenths. The reason is the fear that the donor will himself become poor if he gives away too much. Also, it takes money to make money. The poor end up getting more money over time if the donor gives less every year and wisely invests the rest. There are exceptions. One can give more money to save a life, ransom the captive, support Torah scholars, atone for sin, or if one is near death, up to 30 to 50 percent more depending on the needs of the surviving family. Now we can tackle the line in our portion. We must give the needy de mahsoro, all that he lacks. This means that we must support him to the standard to which he is used. It's the poor, not the givers, who define what is lacking. The Talmud recounts the story of Hillel, the famous rabbi, who provided paupers who came from wealthy families with horses and servants to run before them, since this was the lifestyle they grew up with. One time Hillel could not find a slave to run before the horse, so he ran before it himself for three miles. The Talmud provides other examples. A certain man once asked Rabbi Nehemiah for charity. The rabbi asked him, What do your meals usually consist of? The other replied, Of fat meat and old wine. The rabbi asked him, Would you agree to live with me on lentils? The other agreed, lived with him on lentils, and died. The rabbi said, Alas for this man whom Nehemiah has killed. On the contrary, he should have said, Alas for Nehemiah who killed this man. However, the man himself was to blame, for he should not have indulged in luxurious habits to such an extent. Unquote. Quote, A man once asked Rava for charity. The rabbi asked him, What do your meals usually consist of? The other replied, Of fat chicken and old wine. The rabbi asked him, Did you not consider the burden on the community? The other replied, do I eat what is theirs? I eat the food of the All-Merciful. Rava said to him, I apologize to you. Come and eat. Unquote. All this, of course, assumes that the community can afford it. That is, the community must be able to support itself to the standard that it is accustomed to, before it offers the needy person assistance over and above basic necessities. The Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, summarizes. Quote, how much should be given to the poor? 
די מחסרו אשר יחסר לו. All that he lacks. How is that? If he is starving, feed him. If he needs clothing, clothe him. If he needs items for his house, buy him those items for his house. Even if he was used to riding on a horse, with a servant running ahead of him while he was rich, and now he is poor, buy him the horse and the servants, each man according to his needs. If he, if he was used to receiving bread, give him bread. If he, if he was used to receiving dough, give him dough. If he were, was used to having a bed, give him a bed. A person failing to receive hard bread should continue to receive hard bread. Cold bread, cold bread. If he was fed into his mouth, feed him into his mouth. If he came to get married, rent a house for him, prepare a bed for him and house utensils, and find him a wife." It, it may seem unfair to occasionally have to support needy people at a level higher than ours, but on second thought, maybe not. The objective here is to minimize the pain to everybody involved. Shabbat Shalom.